Thursday Night Tailgate, where the spotlight is always on the positive. Tune in Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time to hear your favorite NFL legends, players, and coaches sharing their stories. Now back to Chris and Bob. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. All right, before we get to our third member of our 2017 Guest Hall of Fame class, Musa Muhammad, I want to give a shout-out to former Giants and Browns fullback and a member of our 2015 Hall of Fame class, Randy Minear and his great staff up at the Salt Creek Golf Retreat in Nashville, Indiana. Let's hear a word from our announcer, Joe Lajanusa, about the great things that they have going on up there. If you're looking for a great place for your annual golf outing, a weekend golf getaway, or just a round of golf with your buddy, then Salt Creek Golf Retreat is just what you're looking for. Centrally located in Nashville, Indiana, just south of Indianapolis and west of Cincinnati, this challenging but fair 18-hole golf course appeals to all skill levels, and its scenic views of rolling hills and tree-lined fairways are sure to make golfing memories for years to come. Owned and operated by former Purdue and New York Giants fullback Randy Manier, Salt Creek Golf Retreat offers stay and play packages that include golf and a fully furnished one or two bedroom condo. After your round, be sure to stop by the 19th Hole Sports Bar and Restaurant for great food, fun, and drinks. Randy and his staff will treat you like family. For more information, log on to saltcreekgolf.com. That's saltcreekgolf.com. Or give them a call at 812-558-5944. Salt Creek Golf Retreat. Start making your golfing memories today. You're listening to Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari, where NFL legends live on. Back to you, boys. It's him. He's alive. And now back in making his seventh visit with us on the Kyvan Foods guest line is the third member of our 2017 Guest Hall of Fame class, Musa Muhammad. Musa has been a treasure for us over the last several years. He first joined us back in January of 2013. He's been a part of the family now for four and a half years, and that shows you how fortunate we are. Let me remind you about Moose's background. He is from Lansing, Michigan, played his college ball at Michigan State, where in his senior season he was fifth in the Big Ten in both receptions and receiving yards. He was a second-round draft pick by the Carolina Panthers in 1996, and he played in the league from 96 to 2009 with the Panthers and the Bears. Was selected to the Pro Bowl twice in 1999 and again in 2004. Led the league in receptions in 2000 with 102 and, and in receiving yards in 2004 with just over 1,400 yards. Over the course of his career, he amassed 860 receptions for 11,438 yards, and he scored 62 touchdowns. He was a part of the Panthers' 2003 NFC Championship team that very nearly knocked off the Patriots in Super Bowl 38. Went back to the Super Bowl three years later with the Bears in Super Bowl 41 against the Colts. In 2014, he was inducted into the Gridiron Greats Hall of Fame, and it is with a great deal of pleasure and honor that we induct him tonight into our Thursday Night Tailgate Guest Hall of Fame. Hey, Moose, Chris, and Bob, thanks for being so fantastic and for coming back on the show tonight. Hey, guys, uh, thank you for uh, having me on. It's an honor and a pleasure, and uh, I I can't believe it's been uh, seven years. I know we've uh, had a lot of great conversations over the time. So, Moose, I want to start our time with you tonight by getting your perspective on your former team, the Carolina Panthers. They had a down year last year. They're off to a 2-0 and start, though, so far this year. They got the the, uh, the Saints and the Patriots coming up over the next couple of weeks, so their defense is about to get tested pretty hard. How do you feel about your boys so far this season? You know, I think uh, they are definitely rebounding from a down year where, um, you know, in my opinion, I, I thought they lost a lot on, on defense, um, which has always been the staple uh, for the Carolina Panthers, you know, when you, you know, lose a guy like Josh Norman, uh, when you lose the leadership of a Charles Tillman, Peanut Tillman, and uh, a Roman Harper, um, and you know other key components um, throughout the season that you, that you lose, you know, number one, Luke Keekley gets injured in the first few games, and 
um, you know, th- those are hard to uh, to replace. And, you know, you go out there, you've got a guy, Worley and Bradbury, and, you know, two talented young corners, but this, it, it was their first year last year. And so, you know, huge learning curve for those guys. And when you look at um, how many games that the Panthers lost by three points or, or less, and it started with the kickoff game versus uh, Denver last year, um, you know, losing that game by a, a failed field goal, um, it just tells you that the you know margin of victory is is very slight, and you know they make a difference. And so, I think the Carolina Panthers rebound this year. Uh, obviously, they're off to a, a pretty good start. Uh, Worley, Bradbury, both corners that um, you know now have a year under their belt and are playing extremely well. Uh, you know they bring in Captain Munderland. Um, they bring in you know, um, a, a veteran safety. And then Kurt Coleman is playing extremely well back there in the secondary. And, of course, you know, two linebackers, that I would argue, are the best two linebacker or the best linebacker tandem uh, with Luke Keekley and, uh, and Thomas Davis. Um, and, oh, let's not forget, you know, you've got Julius Peppers back um, who's, you know, got a couple of sacks already. And, and he's playing with Kwan Short and Mario Addison, who led the team with nine and a half sacks last year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the defense, you know, is the staple of this team. And, and over the first two weeks, I think they broke a record. I think it was in the 80s or sometime like that the, that um, uh, a defense held the first two teams that they played uh, to, to a total of six points, you know, uh, three points in each game. So, um, you know, they're, they're breaking records already this year. I think they'll have a, a phenomenal year on defense. On offense, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Uh, to be honest with you, I think Cam has shown some inconsistencies, and and that's primarily because of the shoulder injury that he had in the off season. Um, you know, he uh, is working out the kinks, and instead of doing that through uh, preseason football, he's you know he's got to do that through the season now. And so um, you've got Christian McCaffrey. You know, I played in the days with his dad Ed, and he's a he's a fiery spark plug kind of guy. He's a sort of utility, do it all, you know, not one position. He's, you know, kind of a, um, you know, it's kind of an X factor kind of player. Um, I don't know if I would put him in any one position, but um, Kelvin Benjamin is back in the lineup. You know, they lose a Teddy Ginn who can stretch the field. And I think that's one thing that they're missing is that, that guy that can stretch the field. But uh, Kelvin Benjamin will be a threat. Um, He'll, he'll be the big body and uh, kind of reminds me of sort of how I used to play and boxing guys out, using your body to catch the football. Um, Devin Funches is another guy that, that can do the same thing. Uh, you know, they just lost Greg Olson to a broken foot. And he was a leading receiver last year. So uh, it'll be tough to replace a guy like uh, like Greg Olson. But I think uh, these guys will find a way. Uh, we may sputter along, but I think a uh, sputter along – uh, through the first quarter of the season until the offense really finds uh, their identity and Mike Shuler really finds, you know, his go-to players, his go-to plays. Uh, but when you got Jonathan Stewart in the backfield and he's running as well as he has in the first two games, I think you can ease a little bit of pressure off of uh, Cam and throwing the football. So, um, you know, my, my prediction, and I, and I think the NFC South is going to be a tough division to win. I mean, Jameis Winston down in Tampa Bay is – you know, obviously uh, doing a stellar job and, and, and off to a quick start. Matt, Matt Ice, Matty Bryan in, in, uh, in, in Atlanta. Um, you know, Devontae Freeman's running the ball extremely well. Their defense looks fast and quick. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they squeaked by that first game against Chicago. But, you know, I think they, after that, you know, pretty sound victory uh, in, their, in their second game. Um, but uh, I think that they'll be at least – three teams in this division that has, you know, 10 wins or better. And, uh, you know, someone is going to, somebody's going to miss the playoffs. So hopefully it's not the Panthers, but um, I think this division will be one of the better divisions um, in, in the conference. Five questions for Moose. Congrats, Moose. It's always an honor to speak with you and I hope everything's been going well with you. <clears throat> I'm going to take you back to your college days. You know, when I see a guy that attended Michigan State, Moose, I always say to myself, oh, Michigan missed out on him. And, and vice versa, if a guy goes to Michigan, you can say, oh, Michigan State was probably heavily recruited in him, too. Did you have your choice of the schools, uh, Moose, and maybe some of the other schools that were after your services? Yeah, actually, actually, I did. I took a visit to uh, University of Michigan and also Michigan State. Um, 
uh, I took a visit to University of Miami. Uh, and, you know, Miami recruited me uh, primarily as a linebacker. Uh, that's back in the old, you know, Jesse Armstead and uh, Mike Barrow's days. And, uh, um, you know, I think it was Dennis Erickson was the uh, head coach back then. And Miami had, a, you know, they, they recruited guys like me that were fast and, um, you know, just you know, tenacious on the defense. And, and you guys know I played linebacker in high school. So um, my father uh, had a little to do with uh, – my decision, you know, he, he was a legacy, excuse me, I'm a legacy. He played at Michigan state back in the days with, um, you know, Bubba Smith and, you know, all those guys that uh, played on that 66 uh, championship team that had to tie with Notre Dame. Um, so he, he had somewhat of an influence on my decision, even though he says that, <laughs> that, you know, he wanted me to make that decision myself or where I wanted to go to school. Um, you know, my, my father and my mother went to Michigan State. They were both um, Spartans. And uh, and like I said, my dad played football. He also um, he also advised me to uh, to switch my position and play wide receiver. He said, you know, son, um, you know, the league at NFL is going to these big prototype wide receivers. And, um, you know, I, I think you'd be a, a good wide receiver. And at the time, playing running back and linebacker in high school, I just scratched my head and said, Dad, what the heck are you talk about? But, you know, years later, it was probably some of the best advice he ever gave me. In that first year in the NFL, Moose, uh, it was a very good Panthers team. Um, and uh, obviously going to the uh, championship game, your rookie year, and uh, just looking over some of the roster, people on that roster, very impressive. Just wondering, out of everyone on that roster, who are some of the guys that made your transition to the NFL easier and basically uh, showed you the ropes more than anyone else? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm, it's funny you ask that. Um, my first, uh, you know, meeting in training camp, um, you know, I was a, I was a holdout, contract holdout, and, you know, here I am flying in from, uh, you know, Lansing, Michigan to, to Charlotte, North Carolina, and then, you know, jumping into a car and driving down to Spartanburg, South Carolina, uh, and signed my contract and ran straight out to the practice field and I about died the first practice because I hadn't felt that type of heat and that intensity. Uh, but... <laughs> So so I was full of IVs, but, I, you know, my first meeting, I sat next to a guy named, named Dwight Stone. And Dwight Stone was an old, uh, you know, Pittsburgh running back, special teams guy. Uh, but for Carolina, he played, he was a, you know, backup wide receiver and played on all special teams in Carolina. Um, you know, I, I, I grabbed a chair and I, and I you know, sat next to, to Dwight. And, you know, I was looking over, and as the coach was going through our installation, um, you know, Dwight had uh, all these markers, a bunch of different colors, highlighters, markers, pens, you name it. And and I didn't know if he was just doing all that to keep himself awake in the meetings because, you know, you'd be pretty tired at the end of the day, you know. Uh, but I paid attention to what he was doing, and he was highlighting every position um, with a different highlighter and he was taking notes and, um, and that's where I learned how to take notes and, and how I learned how to study was sitting next to Dwight Stone, um, in, in the meeting rooms. And, you know, I eventually, you know, grew to learn all the positions on the, on the team and I was interchangeable and I could do different things and it made me, you know, more valuable as a player, but I learned how to take notes from Dwight Stone. Um, my locker in the locker room um, was next to Eric Davis. And, you know, Eric Davis was a cornerback that came from San Francisco. He had played against Jerry Rice, practiced against Jerry Rice in San Francisco, and, um, you know, had a champion, won a championship with San Francisco. And he would always tell me, um, you know, Moose, you don't have to catch every ball. You just got to catch the ones that come to you, and you go to the Pro Bowl every year. And it was very profound, and I kind of scratched my head, like, what the hell is this old guy talking about? But um, but he was right. I mean, you know, if you caught the balls that were thrown to you, um, you know, you could have a really, really good career. I don't know about Pro Bowl every year because it's really a popularity contest, but um, uh, he definitely 
made an impact because he would he would throw these little jewels in my ear every single day, and uh, he was a huge influence. Another guy, uh, Sam Mills, you know, and Sam, um, you know, the late great Sam Mills um, that passed away from cancer. Uh, you know, Sam would he he would say I was a moose that ran like a deer, you know, and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he said that's what he used to always call me. Man, you're the moose that runs like a deer, and he would always, you know, sort of, you know, get in my ear and 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 tell me things. Um, Lamar Lathan um, was, uh, you know, outside linebacker, and he was a he was a huge influence. Um, Robert Griffin, that won, you know, multiple championships with the Denver Broncos, the fullback is, you know, Robert is still a good friend of mine. He works for uh, the Big Ten Network, um, you know, as a broadcaster. Uh, but uh, he, he was really a big influence on me, even though I only played with him for uh, for one year. And uh, I'll mention maybe a couple other guys that I would contribute in my early years. I would say um, uh, Mark Carrier. Um, I just watched the way Mark worked. Mark, Mark went to one Pro Bowl. Uh, he was an alternate, went to a Pro Bowl, played most of his year with Tampa Bay. Um, but, but Mark was just a hard-working bring your lunchbox every single day and really taught me how to practice and how to be a pro. Like, you know, just rolling up your sleeves and coming to work every day. Don't ask to get pat on the back. Just come in and work and let everything else, all the chips fall where they may. And, and I did just that, you know, um, my first day out of practice, um, Mark was catching balls from our wide receiver coach, Richard Williamson. Um, and they would catch 10, 15, 20 balls before every single practice. And as soon as, you know, I, I would take a knee. When the first day I took a knee and I sat there and I watched Mark catch those balls, just, you know, and Coach warmed them up, Rich warmed them up before practice. And then Rich said, what the heck are you doing? Get over here. So I got up and I went over there and, and Rich started throwing me balls. And so every single day of my career, um, and I can say this with conviction, and anyone who played with me, or, you know, practice with me, they know this, that I caught at least 20 to 30 balls um, or more, probably 50 balls before every practice and after every single practice throughout my whole career. And that was my position coach, Richard Williamson. I did that every single year, and I had good hands. Um, and so, you know, Rich, Rich, between Rich and um, uh, and and, and – um, I'm sorry, between Rich and, oh, goodness, it slipped my mind. Uh, I, I actually, you know, so, so they really taught me the practice and, and the hard work and the practice. Um, the other person I would say that was influential with me, guys, is Reggie White. And only had, only played one year with Reggie White. Uh, but Reggie, in my Third year, it was 98 when Reggie came on. Um, Reggie really taught me how to be a leader. You know, I, I played for myself, I'd say, the first couple of years um, on the team, you know, and really trying to find my identity. Uh, but when Reggie came on, uh, and, and I played with Reggie for that one year, Reggie really t- taught me how to lead, you know, and how to be vocal and how to be a leader and how to assume leadership and bring guys with me, you know, don't make, don't just be uh, a good player yourself, make the people around you better. And so, you know, I started learning how to mentor and how to teach through uh, Reggie White. But I would say those guys are probably the most impactful and influential um, on my young career. Moose, before we let you go, let our listeners know, how can they stay up to date with, you know, all the things that you're doing now and, and follow you, whether it's online or it's over social media? Well, I'm on Twitter uh, at Moose Muhammad 87 um, and that's probably, you know, one way to, to stay up with me. Um, I, I'm, I am on Facebook as Moosin Muhammad. Uh, Moosin, I think it's underscore Muhammad. Um, and, you know, I'm not really a huge social media guy. I would say that most of the information um, and things that we put out, my wife does. She kind of runs like the family Facebook, and her name is Krista, C-H-R-I-S-T-A, Muhammad. 
um, and she does a lot of our sort of family posts, um, events, activities, and uh, anything that uh, we're all into. I've got quite the tribe that we uh, corral and uh, and try to lead. But uh, uh, that's probably the best way to, to keep up with me and uh, see what I'm up to. Well, Moose, we can't thank you enough for being a great guest with us over the years and, and uh, for all that you've done for us and the great insights and stories that you've shared and your willingness to come back over and over again and be a part of the show. You know, so thank you very much for all of that. Thanks for being a great member of our now, our guest Hall of Fame, and uh, we certainly look forward to catching up with you again hopefully real soon. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Like I said, it's an honor and a, and a, and a pleasure uh, to to be a part of the show and to be inducted. And um, I look forward to uh, the next conversation. All Thank right, you, sir. Take care. All the best to you and your family. Okay, guys. Take care. Good night. That is uh, former Pro Bowl wide receiver Musa Muhammad. We've got our next guest, Richmond Webb, hanging on the line. We'll get to Richmond right on the other side of this quick station break.